everyone what's up youtube how you doing you good me i am much better okay see by the so, title clearly your girl has surgery but it's not i don't want to say it's minor surgery because surgery is surgery you get cut open you still have a healing process but anyway let's jump right into the video so that it's not too long and i'm not rambling for too long okay for any of you guys that are interested in hearing about this story then come on for my first story time but it'll be a simple let's talk about it <laughs> okay so it all started on a friday um i was at work and i had this sharp pain in my right side i didn't really pay too much attention to it i really like literally i can remember it like it was yesterday i was walking down the hall from the classroom and i was going to the bathroom and i had to stop because i felt like this sharp sharp pain in my side and it was ongoing at first i thought it was gas <laughs> no lie i thought it was gas and um so i go to the bathroom and as i'm using the bathroom it was still there it wasn't like releasing or anything like that and i didn't do number two i went to go went to go a little, do a little tingle tingle okay and as i was urinating okay we're all adults as i was using the bathroom it was still the pain was still there so saturday and sundays are extremely busy for my family okay we have practices at church we clean up uh at church we clean up the house we're grocery shopping saturdays and sundays are extremely busy we have church on sunday uh morning service and then uh evening service so we're, we're busy on saturdays and sundays so if I was in pain you ever move so much that if if anything is aching you you have a mission set before you and you're going to complete this mission regardless of anything that is going to happen unless like it's critically like i can't walk my leg my leg hurts so bad it's broken i can't walk like other than that i'm the type of person if i'm moving i don't I don't want to say I don't consider other things, but if I was in pain Saturday and Sunday, I was moving so much, I do not remember, okay? So Monday, I run copies on Monday. I run the, I run the whole week, Monday through Friday, that Monday. That makes sense? So say today is Monday. I'm going to run next week's work today. So that's what I was doing. I was downstairs running copies in a copying room, and the pain came again. I was like, wait a minute, like... At first, like I said again, I thought it was gas because my co-worker gave me this strong coffee, okay? I thought I was smoking when I drank that coffee. I was like, <coughs> that coffee was so strong. So I thought the coffee was giving me pains. I was like, mm, maybe I need to stop drinking this coffee because every time I drink this coffee, I feel like I'm in pain. So I automatically equated the pain to gas and I thought I was getting the gas from the coffee. I might sound crazy, but that's what was going on in my mind, okay? So the nurse office is right down a few doors down from the copying room I go to her and I'm like uh, ma'am I'm having a sharp pain in my side and I'm pointing to my right ovarian side that's what I was pointing at and she's like she called it off top like baby that might be an ovarian cyst I was like I can tell that I have grown in this Christian walk in my Christian walk in my Christian journey because things used to now I haven't arrived Hear me and hear me well. I have not arrived, but I have grown because things, any type of news that was new to me would automatically send me into a panic or automatically send me into a worried state. So when, I, when we say or when you hear that God is the Prince of Peace, okay, when she said that, it was like, okay, okay. She was like, you might need to go get it checked out. Um, she was like, especially if you're having pain and it's something that you really should go get checked out. Then, I'm a spoiled brat, okay? I acknowledge it, okay? I am spoiled. I am the only girl in my family. I have all boys in my family. I have two little brothers. I have male cousins and my uncles and my grandfather. And then there's my mother and my aunt. I am spoiled, okay? I admit that, okay? And... My husband is far from a pushover. My husband is a man, okay? But he cares for his wife, and I appreciate that. So I call him, and I automatically turn into a baby. <laughs> I automatically start crying. I'm like, it hurts. It hurts. Now, it was hurting, but I automatically tear it up. I'm talking to the nurse, and we chilling. Like, my face is all scrunched up. Like, I'm in pain, lady. Like, 
I can't stand up straight. I'm in so much pain. But she we lay on a you know the little nursing school nursing mats that they got. I lay on that and I call him and I'm in I'm bawling, boo hooing. Like <laughs> he's like, okay. He's like, uh so I called after I call, before I called him, I called the base operator to set up an appointment with the OBGYN clinic over here by the at the nearest hospital that we're at. And that point mind you, it's like nine o'clock in the morning. That appointment wasn't until three in the afternoon. I was like, Yeah, I ain't got nothing earlier. They're like, No, I'm like, Okay. Cause I did not want to go to the ER, okay? I do not like sitting in the ER for fifteen hours for you to give me a pain medicine and discharge papers. I cannot stand the ER. I understand it's just there for a purpose and I don't understand why they move so slow. But okay, I don't like going to the ER. So I get my appointment, I call my husband, I'm going upstairs. Now the nurse, the nurse is like, I don't think you should go, you need to go to the ER, just set up an appointment. She's like, let them know how much pain you're in. And she's talking to me as I'm talking to the people, to the clinic. And we set up the appointment. She's like, okay, so then uh, once you get that checked out, you'll be all right. Call Jason. I'm, going, I'm headed back upstairs to my classroom. I get upstairs to my classroom. My teacher that I work with is like my second mom, okay? She's like, no, you need to go to the ER because no, you're in pain. That means you need to go to the ER. So I call my husband back like, oh, mm. she, she said I need to go to the ER. So can you come and get me? So he comes and pick me up. We go to the ER. We're sitting there. Thankfully, thank the Lord, I wasn't complaining or anything. Y'all, like, growth is real, okay? Change is not change until you change, and I have changed in certain areas, okay? Still growth to be made. But I have, I have, I can honestly see growth in, in my walk and in my development as I continue to mature. But we're waiting, and I do my little, my little urine test, and uh, we get back to the room. We go for a CAT scan. Sending me this little metal, little warm stuff they put through your, your IV and stuff. Get my CAT scan and I get, I get my CAT scan. Then the doctor comes in and tells me that he does see, uh, a, a, did he call it a cyst? I'm going to say he called it a cyst. He said, ah, see, he said the CAT scan is showing up that you have a cyst, an ovarian cyst. We're going to send you down to, we're going to send you down to, what is the place called? Ultrasound. We're gonna send you down there to get an ultrasound. I get down there to get this ultrasound. Okay, got me in a wheelchair and my little gown on and everything. She shows me this ultrasound, and you know, we're here. We're here where we're at. I don't know if in other places, but we can't. You saying you can't video, video it? Cause y'all know I love y'all. Cause I was like, I need to record this so I can show these people, <laughs> so I can show my people what is going on. Okay, she showed me that thing. That I said, who Lord, that that, that look big, man. She said, yeah, it is pretty big. <laughs> Hospital people are so kind. Well, majority of them. She's like, yeah, it is It is pretty big. It is It is a little on the larger side. <laughs> trying to try to soften it, soften the blow. We get back to the room. The, the, uh, the doctor is like, we see the sis. Now, my Jew. Okay. This is why I don't like going to the ER, all right? I was in the ER. We got there about 10. My appointment at OB was at 3. We get the discharge papers so that I can leave the OR to go to my appointment. Did you hear what I said? We was there at 10. My appointment was at 3. I get my discharge papers rushed so I can make it to my appointment on time. That right there, people is why I do not like going to the ER. Okay, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 5 hours. Nonetheless, everything was taken care of. <laughs> we found out what it was. At this time, I am being rushed to the appointment and um, we get there and they're like, uh, she's a little backed up. So, we're going to take your vitals and we will be with you shortly. She is a little backed up. We are going to take your vitals and we will be with you shortly. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, 
shortly, y'all. I didn't get seen until 415. It's only a test you're going through. It won't last always, okay? Because I knew my patience was being tried that day, okay? <laughs> oh, Lord. I got the little ice comments. I was like, huh, I need to write y'all a comment because this is not, I don't know how y'all are an hour behind on y'all appointments, but y'all need to get it together because this is not appropriate, okay? I got my little ice comment. I didn't fill it out. We go back there and then it was a midwife. I was like, y'all at this point, I was so like, come on, what is going on? Like, no disrespect to the midwife at all, okay? But I'm like, I've been in the ER. We've seen the doctor in the ER. You guys know what the issue is. I'm not here to talk more about the issue. We already know what the issue is. We're here for the solution. So she comes in and she's like, um, well, I see in your chart that we were a little past me. I was looking like, I ain't say nothing, but I was like, uh, that's what I was thinking. I, was, I thought we was coming here to see the doctor so she could tell us what we're going to do next. She said, okay, well, the doctor's on call. Oh, y'all, I promise you, I was getting tried, man. She said, doctor's on call, so we have to wait until she comes back downstairs. So she comes back downstairs, and sweet. They're all sweet. They're all sweet. I was just impatient because I had been here since 10 o'clock, and it is now full, and we are still trying to figure out what we're going to do about this ovarian cyst that had me in pain. Come to find out, the 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 cyst is eight centimeters, about the size of a baby's head. You know, you know how when you when you when you go in to have a, uh, to get to deliver, you got to get to ten centimeters so that the head can be pushed out. Okay, right? So it's about eight centimeters. So that's pretty big for for a cyst. The one that I had, I'm pretty sure the people have had larger cysts, but for mine it was big. She said with the size that it is, she said normally cysts go down on their own. With your size, we're going to have to surgically remove it. Growth. It's like, okay. <laughs> we gotta do what we gotta do. Like, come on. Y'all, I am telling you. Jasmine last year would have been in there balling her butt out. Okay, balling her butt out. Not balling my eyes out. Balling her butt out. I don't know how you do it, but it would have been happening. Okay? Because I would have been having... I would have had a fit if this would have had... had I would have had a fit if this was me last year. I know it for a fact. But I was like, okay, well, we got to do what we got to do, right? Like, so what's going to happen? She said, we're not going to do the surgery right now. We're going to have you come back tomorrow. So Monday, come back Tuesday morning, and we're going we're gonna to have the surgery. Okay? That's that's about it, y'all. Had my surgery on a Tuesday. I got my two, got my three little incisions. I got my two on my side with the right ovary because that's where it was at. And then I got one in my belly button. Drained it. Said she removed some of it. So she also went in. This is what was a, was one of the kickers. When they say take care of your body, don't rush yourself out of out of uh, the healing process or the recovery process, however you want to however you want to call it. Don't rush it because uh, although your outward appearance may be okay and you think physically and mentally that you're ready to push through all types of craziness in the world after you just had surgery, big, small, whatever surgery, being cut open and going into your body is surgery. Big or small, you need to be able to heal. You need to have your healing process. My kids are seven years old. When Calvin was born, who will be two on in June, they were trying to find my, my little uterus, right? They were trying to find it. Come to find out from this surgery, my uterus was lopsided because I had a C-section with the twins and I had a V-back with Calvin. My, my, my uterus was lopsided. She said she had to go in and remove some of the scar tissue so that my uterus can, can level itself back out. Take care of your bodies, okay? I am so... I am so eye opened. Did I just make that up? Open eyed at it, okay? At the testing trials that we go through. They're literally here to build you up. No matter how difficult it may seem, no matter how frustrating it may seem, or impatient you may seem through it, do not give up on anything that you are doing in life, anything that you are pursuing in life. Don't give up because 
as long as you continue to want to be a better person, as long as the willing mind is there for you to be a better person, the growth will come. There's something our, our apostle says at church is change is not change until you change. He also says trying is lying if there is no progress. Okay, so if you say you trying and you ain't progressing, you just might be lying. Okay, and it's so real. Like, cause you can say I'm trying, but you ain't. You know when you trying and when you ain't really trying. So as long as you're tr sincerely trying and you're willing to change the change will come and this is like my personal testimony to y'all because the mindset that jasmine had a few years back would have flipped out over this this situation that i have just gone through and not to say that it's a big situation or it's a small situation nonetheless it's a situation that you go through and what i can handle you may not be able to handle what you can handle i may not be able to handle your walk is for you continue to push forward and just strive to be the better person to be a better to be a better you man that's that's basically what i wanted to come up here and say, talk about the fact that i was able to go through this and y'all i feel like i have not been centered at all but anyway <laughs> the fact that i was able to go through this and to see how much i have changed is a true eye opener for me and i didn't realize that until i just said it like that's crazy it's not crazy it's needed it's necessary but it is crazy nonetheless i hope you guys enjoyed this in this quick maybe not so quick because i don't know how long i've been talking but i hope you guys enjoyed my little talk about this situation my little story time about my first ovarian cyst surgically removal situation and just growth in general i hope you guys if you guys have any questions about what i what happened or any any details that you want further I'm here. Just leave your comments down below, okay? And I'm going to close this video out because if it's not too much, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Until next time, bye.